is Sirius XM Doctor Radio. And now, from the heart of the NYU Langone Medical Center, this is Doctor Radio Reports. Coronavirus. What you need to know now. Here is your host, Dr. Mark Siegel. But I want to talk about antiviral drugs because they're getting a ton of attention right now. And and I was actually very struck by what Stephen Hahn said last night. He was on TV right before me, and then I came on, and I was I was so struck by what he said, I actually had a comment on it. It wasn't what I was planning to do. So here's the issue. The issue is that some leader, I guess it m- maybe the president, says this is he has a good feeling about this then tony fauci says well wait a minute there's no clinical trials really that we can rely on there's a small study in france that's a group of people it's been tried in china it's been tried in south korea there's a ton of anecdotal evidence it's been tried in france it's being tried here at the university of washington for severe cases now the university of minnesota has a study new york state just started its study this morning and they keep mixing up chloroquine with hydro- with hydroxychloroquine. <laughs> they should actually read the name before they say it on TV, right? <laughs> so they can't get hydroxychloroquine right. Maybe I'm going to tell them, hey, if you're listening to me out there, look up Plaquenil. That'll, that'll keep it straight in your mind. <laughs> but, 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 but anyway, hydroxychloroquine is the more promising of those two drugs because there was a laboratory study that showed that it's more effective against coronavirus, um, this coronavirus in the lab Clinically, I mean, you know, I guess it remains to be seen. But my view on this was similar to what Stephen Hahn said yesterday, which is it's not proven. You know, we don't know if it's if it helps or not. We think it might. But if I'm a clinician facing a very sick elderly patient who's at high risk and I and they don't have an arrhythmia problem, by the way, which nobody is remembering to put to say on TV, which, hey, by the way, it prolongs the QT interval. The, 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 both of these drugs do, Zithromax and, and hydroxychloroquine. So what do you think of do you think of giving it, Mark, off label, even though it's not yet proven? Absolutely not. And I'll tell you why. First of all, there are um, multiple trials coming out at lightning speed. I've never seen this before, Mark, ever, where ideas are being um, translated into clinical trials so that we can get the newest and the best ideas and medications to our patients in the hospitals. There are multiple clinical trials, and there are multiple ideas, and we have so much brilliance in this country, in every institution, the number of people who have dedicated their lives and now who have redoubled their efforts to figure out how to beat this thing. There's no question that one of these drugs is going to work and we're going to figure it out. But it's not going to work if we start taking drugs haphazardly and giving them to people in in their homes. Even worse, if it is a drug that works, it should be used in a controlled manner um, and studied closely in a hospital setting. So it's been infuriating, quite frankly, to see people hoarding Plaquenil because people who might need it in the hospital are not going to be able to get it. Um, There are studies being done. It's possible that Plaquenil might work um, uh, earlier when someone is initially getting sick. But for someone who is not really sick or minimally sick, they're going to get better. It, you know, the good news about this virus is that most patients are going to do just fine. Eighty percent have, you know, just like a bad cold or a mild flu. It's the other 20 percent we worry about. And really, the mortality, I think, in this country is going to be less than one percent, which means 99 percent of people are not going to die from this disease. But when you talk about the numbers that we're seeing, you know, now worldwide, 400,000 in New York. um, Well, in the U.S., it's almost 50,000. Even one percent is a large number of people. And that's why we're seeing so many deaths in Italy and other places. But we cannot just start haphazardly thinking that one drug may work because of a tiny little study. We really have to do it in a way that's going to maximize our ability to learn, but most importantly, to treat our patients who are sick. Just I'm going to summarize quickly because I want to go to the phones and also another Facebook question, but I want to go through them and see if you agree. Remdesivir, I spoke to uh, Dr. Khalil out in Nebraska when I was out there. I interviewed him on it. Uh, he's the, 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 he's the uh, investigative coordinator for the trials right. all around the country. His feeling about it, and, and Fauci told me he think, he's a fan of his. He thinks a great scientist. His feeling is that it's probably moderately successful, but that's an off-the-record feeling. It's not a clinical trial. He's in the middle of trying it. They've been giving it for compassionate use. Any thoughts on remdesivir? No, agreed. I think there's a lot of excitement and the concept behind it, but still um, preliminary data is showing perhaps some benefit, but it needs to be studied. And it's certainly not something that you would just 
give without um, really considering where a patient's at clinically and what else might be needed to treat. But we are using drugs both on compassionate use and also in clinical trials, but we have to do it in a rational way. Uh, Marion from Facebook, is virus spread through the air? Now, Mark, one of the things that's compu- confusing people about this is that study that showed that it can stay in the air for three hours, but that's the same as the other SARS virus, by the way. So, so what do you make of this? I mean, I know, I know what I would say, but w- what do you have to say? So it's not spread in the air in the sense that if someone is breathing um, in an area and then you go in that area that you're going to get it. But if someone is coughing actively and they're aerosolizing these droplets, that's where it could spread in the air in that regard. So um, the technical answer is it's not spread in the air, it's spread by droplets. But if someone is coughing, then um, it can be spread uh, because it probably does stay around a little bit. And that is why, once again, it comes back to us being mindful of others. If you have a cough, do not leave your home or wear a mask. But it's really coughing that's going to spread it, not um, just air and breathing.